Hi there. I welcome you to today's lesson. This is your facilitator, Dozaman. In today's video lesson, we are going to talk about the particulate nature of matter. The particulate nature of matter. And for the sake of this topic, I would like to define what matter is. Even though we are going to talk about matter in details when we get to a topic called state of matter. Now, when we talk about matter, matter can be defined as anything that has mass and volume. Anything that has mass and volume. Mass is the quantity of matter contained in an object and volume is the space occupied by matter so anything that has mass and volume can be termed as matter all right let's proceed the particulate nature of matter now, when we talk about the particulate nature of matter, it is an idea. And this idea talks about the fact that matter is made up of tiny or discrete particles. Tiny or discrete particles. These tiny particles are held together by various types of bond. <laughs> Bonding is also another topic that is ahead of us. We'll be treating it. And under that, we'll be talking about various types of bond, like the interatomic and the intermolecular bonds. Just to mention, but few. Let's proceed. Democritus was one of the ancient Greek thinkers. And in 500 BC, he believed in the idea that matter is made up of tiny particles. As a result, he named these tiny particles that made up matter, or that matter is constituted of, as atoms, from the Greek word atomos, meaning indivisible. So, maybe you've heard of atom before, but you don't know how the name atom came into being. It was an ancient Greek thinker by the name Democritus who named these tiny particles in matter atoms from the Greek word atoms which means indivisible. Also in the year 1808 there was an English schoolmaster by the name John Dalton. He also performed many experiments and as a result of his experiment he also embraced the idea that matter is made up of tiny particles which is termed as atoms and he even further suggested that these atoms combine to form compound atoms called molecules and also he suggested a theory he proposed a theory known as the Dalton atomic theory which is what we are going to talk about mainly in our next video lesson. The Dalton's Atomic Theory will be the main thing that we'll be talking about in our next video lesson. So I want you to take note of that. So Dalton, John Dalton also believed in what Democritus said that indeed matter is made up of tiny particles, which is the atom. And he further suggested that this atom combine to form compound atoms called molecules so as i said earlier by experiment it is known that matter is made up of either atoms molecules or ions and they are referred to as the basic building blocks of matter in other words these atoms these molecules or ions form what is called matter they are the constituent elements of matter i want you to take note of that and hence they are termed as the building blocks because they comes together 
to form matter. Now let's define this um, building blocks of matter one after the other. The first one is atom. Atom is the smallest particle of an element which can take part in a chemical reaction and always keep the property of that element. An example of an atom is we have the sodium atom with the chemical symbol Na in the bracket we have zinc atom Zn we have neon atom Ne etc. We have a lot of um, atoms. We have the molybdenum atom, we have bismuth atom, we have titanium atom, we have chromium atom, we have carbon atom, hydrogen atom, we have magnesium atom, etc. Molecule as another building blocks of matter. We talk about molecule. A molecule is a group of atoms held together by chemical forces and they are the smallest stable particle of matter which exists independently or on its own. They exist independently or on its own. An example, we have the hydrogen molecule, we have the water molecule, chlorine molecule, just to mention but few. All these are examples. And as we proceed further, uh, you are going to understand all these things very clearly. I just want you to stay tuned and follow all the lessons in order to enrich your scope as a chemistry student. The last building block is iron. Iron. And an iron is an electrically charged atom or group of atoms. Form when an atom or group of atoms loses or gain one or more electrons. Now, what I want you to take note of is that when we talk about just iron, an iron is an electrically charged atom or group of atoms that is in the form of compound. Take note of that. And an iron is formed when an atom or group of bonded atoms loses or gains one or more electrons. So, example, we have the calcium iron, which is having a positively charged 2 plus. We have the chlorine iron or the chloride iron, which is having a negatively charge that is one now what i want you to take note of is that we said that an iron is formed when an atom or a group of atom loses or gain one or more electron in other words when an atom or a group of atoms loses an elect lose an electron or electrons an iron is formed at the same time when an atom or group of bonded atoms gains one or more electrons an iron is formed so if that is the case, then we have an iron forming as a result of loss of an electron. And we have an iron also forming as a result of gain of an electron. And this will lead us to the types of ions. So we have two main types of ions. One is formed as a result of losing an electron or electrons. The other is formed as a result of gaining an electron or electrons. So, the first one is cation and the other is anion. Cation and anion. These are the two main types of iron. Let's talk about the first one, cation. Let's talk about cation. Cation is a positively charged particle. A positively charged particle. And it is formed when an atom or group of bonded atoms loses one or more electrons. For example, we have the silver iron. You have the magnesium iron, you have the ammonium iron, just to mention, but few. Then we have the anion, which is also a negatively charged particle. Four, when an atom or group of bonded atoms gains one or more electrons. And at that also we can talk about the sulfide iron, the nitrate iron, as an example. So, this are the two main types of ions one is formed as a result of loss of an electron or electrons which is the cation and the other is formed as a result of gain of an electron or electrons term as the anion now we have evidence supporting the particular nature of matter Evidence backing the idea that indeed matter is made up of tiny or discrete particles. 
evidence supporting the idea that indeed we are building blocks of matter being the iron being the atom being the molecule and these particles in matter cannot be seen with the naked eye not even with the use of powerful microscope however the idea is proven by experiment some of the evidence are we have diffusion we have osmosis we have the brownian motion which came about by robert brown a botanist he came out with the brownian motion now diffusion is the movement of molecules from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration until the molecules are evenly distributed now take for instance you have a deodorant you spray it at one corner of your room then within a shorter period of time second it diffuses within the entire room the entire atmosphere within your room it is telling you that that perfume that you sprayed or you release has spread itself and now it has formed parts of the air surrounding the room and that is an indication that indeed you sprayed it came in the form of a gas but it has spread and it is telling you that indeed there are tiny 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 particles that come together to form it brownian motion is the zigzag movement of a speck of solid on the surface of a liquid what um, Brown did was that he took some pollen grains and then added it into water and he observed its movement with the aid of a light microscope and he realized that the movement was in a zigzag pattern and that zigzag pattern is what is termed as or that zigzag movement is what is termed as the Brownian motion and lastly we have osmosis which is the movement of water molecules from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration through a semi-permeable membrane so the ability of the molecules of water to penetrate through a semi-permeable membrane is an indication that indeed water which is an example of matter is consists of tiny tiny particles which cannot be seen with the naked eye but have the ability to penetrate through the permeable membrane yes it's an indication that indeed matter is made up of tiny or discrete particles these are not the only evidence crystallization is there we even have the law of multiple proportion also as an evidence of the particulate nature of matter now let's perform this activity um, orally because we are not in the lab <laughs> but uh, I, I will encourage you to try it um, in your house or on campus or even with your chemistry teacher when you find yourself in the lab dissolve two to three crystals of potassium permanganate in 100 ml of water okay in a beaker like this one here now when you are done just fetch 10 ml out of the 100 ml fetch just 10 ml and then transfer down 10 ml that you have fetched from the first beaker and then pour it into another beaker containing 100 ml of water immediately that you do that you realize that the water will turn from colorless and then it will have the purple color of the potassium permanganate that is telling you that what that means is that the potassium permanganate consists of is tiny 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 that, that come together to form that crystal that you dissolved so as you fetch and you transfer into the new um container here the second one what is happening is that they begin to spread within that one too now fetch again from the second beaker here and then transfer it to a third beaker another 10 ml to transfer it to another beaker containing water 10 ml volume of water 
100 ml volume of water and then you see that indeed it was spread and then the color will turn from colorless the color of the water we know that water is colorless but it will have a color which is the purple color of the potassium permanganate repeat it several as you keep repeating it you see that though the color the color will be fading but still the color of the the purple color of the potassium permanganate will be fading as you keep transferring um 10 ml from um the previous one to another beaker what that means is that one the first thing that i want you to take note of that what that means is that indeed even when you fed that 10 ml it still contain tiny 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 particles of the potassium permanganate so as you release them into that fresh water that colorless water they begin to spread within the water and as they spread then the color of the potassium permanganate that is purple will become the color of the water now another thing that i want you to take note of that the fact that it is fading is an indication that as you keep transferring now you are decreasing the concentration or the amount of substance of the potassium permanganate and that is the reason why the color is fading take note of that so here too we have three jars initially they were containing water and then a blue colored um, substance were released now the potassium permanganate is in a dropper and a drop was just released so here at this point here at the tip you see it as a liquid but when it was released just a drop you see that now it is splitting it is splitting here into tiny tiny particles not in the form of drop as they look like liquid here then you see that they started to, uh, to spread to spread and here they have spread evenly so this is still now you can see tiny particle tiny particle tiny particle tiny particle tiny particle tiny particle telling us that indeed matter is made up of tiny or discrete particles so all these are evidence supporting the idea that matter is made up of tiny discrete particles so this will lead us to the end of the lesson thanks for watching and please don't forget to like comment and subscribe the hypothetical chemist chemistry jesus is stronger